is to give you a very interesting lecture and the lecture is titled as War Photography. I am a landscape photographer but today I am going to teach you something and show you something that what goes into taking pictures during war. Patients for a lecture like this, what do you think it's going to be like? It's like a perspective from different photographers, probably their point of view. Right. Work. Right. It's a little bit of moonlight. Yeah. Well, it's still like a perspective from different photographers, probably their point of view. Right. Work. Right. You see, the most critical thing about journalism is not to be very subjective, but it's just to report the facts. You don't have to say something is good or something is bad. You don't take sides in a war. You don't take sides on anything. You just report the facts, and then the public is the one to decide whether it's right or wrong. So there's going to be, it's going to be a three-hour lecture, and it's going to be very graphic and very strong, because this is actual footage from wars in six or seven regions in the last ten years. Some which you may be aware of, some which you're not aware of because you're in Central Asia. But a lot of things are happening around the world and uh, how CNN reports, how other uh, channels report and uh, you know how actually you go on the war zone and you start taking pictures. It's a completely different thing than seeing it in your bedroom. But this will try and give you a real life um, as close as you can get to real war time. The first thing that I'll try and show you is a very short film. And to be a war journalist is a very difficult job. It's not something that you just take a, pick up a camera and you start shooting. It's something in peacetime when you go looking for something. As a photographer, you have an assignment or you're told what you want to do. And you're driven by that. But when you walk into a war zone, you don't know which, uh, you know, what you're expecting. You can suddenly see a tank coming from some place, you can suddenly see a plane coming, a helicopter coming, enemy coming. So how do you react to such situations? And the emotions are changing very, very fast. One second you're very upset, second second you're very frightened. But as a war photographer, the, the instinct that's working mostly with you is survival instinct. Do you want to survive? You want to capture the action, but you want to survive. When there's a war going on, most of the time, the civilians and soldiers are always told to go down, you know, to avoid sharpness, to avoid other issues. But here, in this situation, you have to stand up and take the photograph. Actually, make yourself a possible target while you're photographing and you're taking pictures. It could be on video, it could be on still. And then when you're doing on still, how do you photograph? That's real. How do you walk into that zone? And how do you start looking at situations? How do you try and reenact that through your pictures? What actually happened? You see parts of smoke. You see old people coming, young people coming out. You suddenly see situations where there are graves, there are mass graves, there are all kinds of things that are happening. And you have to document them. And it's something very difficult. You have to get used to this. So to be a war photographer is even tougher than being a soldier. Because as a soldier, you are just commanded what to do. And you're a group. But as a war photographer, you're standing all alone. And you have to stand up and do that. So the first segment of this lecture, I'm going to start by showing you a very short film. Mm -hmm. It's an award-winning film and uh, have a look at it and see how it uh, impacts you.
Okay, get down. Get down.
live coming from CNN on this. Uh, this is a reality of what's happening on the ground in Libya, in North Africa, in the Middle East. In the early days of the Libyan uprising, we spoke with a brave young man about the chaos in Benghazi, Mohammed Nabus. He spoke with me late at night on a day when he had watched friends die. Even then, he fretted that death could come at any moment. Tragically, it did come for him on Saturday when he was killed by a sniper's bullet. And in the last few weeks, Nabus, well, he made it his mission to tell the world about the revolt by any means necessary. Believe that your life is in jeopardy just by making this call and talking to us now. Of course, I do. They have already shut down two of my SIM cards, of my personal SIM cards. This is not mine. This is just a random SIM card I was given to be able to... Thank you so much and be in touch and be safe, okay? I'm not sure I would be there tomorrow because I'm not sure if I'm going to survive tonight, but there's going to be another group tomorrow with you, hopefully. Uh, hang I on. I haven't done do, the confirmation. Do you, do you think the situation is that them. bad that you believe that people won't survive overnight? It, it, is it that bad? I'm telling you my friend has died already and all 200 people died. I don't know what's going to be worse to you. This is what happens, you know, when you get into war photography and you get into that zone where you're trying to report the facts, irrespective of your life, you know. The idea is to get the message across. So it's a kind of a personal choice, personal decision. It's kind of your crusade to get the truth, to get the message out, and to show the world really what is really happening over there. A feature film which I really want you all to see. It's a documentary on war photography. This documentary is uh, one of the world's best war photographers. He's still alive and he's photographed right from the beginning. And uh, he has a very specific way on how he goes about doing it. And he captures emotions and the effects of war. What happens in the war zone after the immediate impact of the war. And he brings that up. A lot of his work is published around the world in famous magazines. A lot of exhibitions have been done. And this feature film that you see is won an Academy Award at the Oscars for, for the best, best documentary this year. And uh, I'll show that to you. And I think that's a very true what uh, Robert Kappa said, because you have to be very close to your subject. To become a part and parcel of it, you have to understand it, you have to understand the cause for which you are photographing, you know. It's very, very important in that respect. I can promise you that when you go home today, for the next one week, whatever you see today in this room will remain in your mind. I can promise you. And you will begin to understand so many things that happen in the world out of Central Asia because you are captivated by the emotions that these images are carrying across to you. Can it anywhere in the world and pass some messages, which is really very beneficial because you can reach out the world circulation much faster through the net. The actual footage from war zones all over the world. And not only war zones, but situations like in uh, things like Indonesia where uh, children are being misused for many things. Laborers are working in, in mines which are very difficult. But the idea is to get the message across. Okay? So all of you are ready? Any yeah. questions? Do you understand everything, young lady? You didn't understand? You understood? Okay. Ever you all get into a situation where you want to do something like this in your life, in journalism, and you come up with content, on anything, maybe you go to the gold mines over here and you want to photograph them, you photograph anything that you think has meaning, you can send the information to me and I'll see that it goes to the producers. And they'll give you a true analysis of what is correct or what is wrong for your approach to the subject. Okay? Thank you very much for your time.